Welcome to Palestine Studies TV. I'm your host, Omar Badar, and today we're going to be speaking with Palestinian American comedian Saeed Durra. So, Saeed, tell us, uh, you're a Palestinian American comedian. Uh, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Palestine and what Palestine means to you. Uh, I am a Palestinian. I, uh, I try to live to be a uh, Palestinian every day. Uh, what that basically means to me is that my, uh, my entire family on my mom's side is from Palestine, from uh, from the Gaza Strip. So uh, I was raised uh, mostly by my mom, um, my dad working a lot, so my mom instilled the Palestinian uh, culture into me. And my dad is very smart, being from Jordan and living with a Palestinian woman, to allow her to do that. And uh, and I think he even claims to be Palestinian now, yeah. too. So. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, you know, a lot of your comedy actually includes elements about Palestinian culture, um, and you talk about your family a lot. I'm curious, and you're also a very vocal activist on a lot of issues, and Palestine is a big one of them. Do you view these things as two separate things? You're a comedian and an activist, or do you see yourself as an activist through comedy? Um, I just think that I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm what I would call like a, a real Arab, uh, and so there isn't really a switch for me. Uh, I don't find myself in groups sometimes saying, you know, you can call me Saeed Dura, but then tonight you can call me Saeed Dura. You know, like, I, I don't have a switch that turns off. And I think that that, uh, oftentimes, the, you know, when people kind of taste food from back home, they, they, they have that look on their face of, ah, this is, this is how it's supposed to taste. Uh, I feel like when I'm performing my comedy and people see how Arab it is, they get almost that same feeling that without the calories. They, uh, you know, they, they have that, <sighs> finally, like somebody who uh, can pronounce their name correctly and somebody who really understands, uh, you know, what, what the culture is about. And uh, this is not an act on stage. When he leaves the stage, he really does do these things. So uh, I feel that, you know, they always say that, like, uh, I think it's uh, liars have to have the best memory. Mm -hmm. Well, life is so much easier when you could just naturally be Arab. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to remember, oh, I'm supposed to pronounce it this way. Oh, I'm supposed to act this way. Just be yourself. Everything will take care of itself. Yep. That was on a Hallmark card, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Good place to get yeah. material from. Yeah. Uh, have you performed anywhere in the Middle East? I haven't gotten paid anywhere in the Middle East. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is every time I go back to Palestine or I go to Jordan, uh, you know, they... They sit a bunch of chairs in a courtyard. Said, yalla, do it. Comedy, funny, joke, yalla, no, do it. Make me laugh. Um, so that's basically how I perform when I go over there. Uh, but I'm usually walking around in awe because, like, Gaza and, and places like Jordan, Dubai, uh, Egypt, all the places where I have family, uh, I like to walk around and just, you know, like I'm in a museum. Yeah. So I, I tend not to want to waste any time performing. <laughs> I, that, that's where I'd like to absorb my material. So, the little off-the-cuff comedy that you did try to do in Palestine, are people there harder to make laugh or easier? No, actually, they're funnier. Um, people in, especially in Palestine, um, you know, a lot of people use, like, the, uh, the cell phones. That's how they do their jokes, because it's not really best practice uh, in Palestine to stand outside the mosque and say, knock, knock, who's there, you know? Uh, they don't really do that stuff, but they use like cell phones a lot and email a lot. Um, so you'll always hear like, "Oh, um, I was sent a joke this morning. Let me read it to you." Uh, but they're always funnier. Like the uh, Arab uh, or Arabs uh, were natural storytellers. So uh, I did not become a comedian uh, because of some like misconfiguration in my DNA. Uh, it, everyone in my family is uh, it's probably funnier than I am. Uh, which is why my mom says, and my dad said, you know, if we did this, we would have been great. You're just good. Yeah. <laughs> so. And when you talk about Palestinian culture in your comedy, is there a conscious effort? You know, are you mindful of the fact that you're primarily performing to American audiences and you feel like there's an image that you have to present to them in a certain way? Or is that really completely absent and you're just doing whatever you think is funny? Um, no, I, I kind of... Uh, like what I was saying before where I say, you know, I kind of want to be me at all times. You know, that's uh, the reason why I always have my, my kefiyah or hatha or scarf, whichever you want to call it. 
Um, I always remind people, like, when I did a performance here at the, uh, the Navy Memorial Museum, I guess, in Washington, D.C. here, um, and uh, when I went to go on stage, I was wearing my keffiyeh, and it was, you know, this guy was on Comedy Central, and there's nobody really there that's Arab performing, and, he's, and uh, you know, one of the guys said, are you going to wear that on stage? And I always joked to him, saying, if I don't wear that on stage, I don't go on stage, so you choose, you tell me if I'm wearing <laughs> it or not. So, uh, so I said, all right, that's fine, and I did Broadway and a few other things. I always wear it. So I tell, and I walked out onto the stage, and I said, excuse me, I just want to check something. I'm a Muslim, Arab, American comedian. Uh, Palestinian, Jordanian, born in Detroit. I like to wear this. It's from Gaza. Is that going to be a problem? And the crowd kind of looked at each other awkwardly, and then they started <laughs> to applaud. And I said, "All right, cool." So, at the end of the day, if you're funny, um, or if you're good at what you do, you know they're not really going to care. I mean, if Muhammad Ali was a horrible boxer, we would have never heard about Muhammad Ali. Yeah. But you know, I'm not saying I'm a great boxer or the Muhammad Ali of comedy by any means, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, it's whatever. Are there any people who are critical of your comedy precisely because you are Palestinian and they feel like you have any kind of obligations that they, in their eyes you don't fulfill because you're simply out there and just being funny and don't have a broader agenda? The only people that, I, I guess I could say the negative and the positive side of things. The, a lot of, the only negative feedback that you'll get are from people who don't appreciate your existence. And that's it. Um, if if somebody doesn't like the fact that I'm a uh, I'm a Palestinian comedian, they probably just don't like Palestinians. Um, so if if a Palestinian was on stage making a burrito, they they would say that's the worst burrito I've ever seen because they don't like the fact that Palestinians on stage. So I don't really have from a negative side even people who are uh, who are Palestinian and and say I don't like this guy doing comedy. They just don't like comedy. They don't like comedians. They don't think we should be on stage. Um, they feel that we don't reach, we don't, you know, build any bridges. We don't, we don't reach anybody that we should. Um, but I tell them, you know, if you if you stood in front of a thousand Arabs and told them about you being Arab and that they should accept you, you, what's the big deal? You're preaching to the choir. But when I go in front of even a hundred people who don't have any appreciation for my culture and just one of them says, hmm, it's interesting, then I win. So uh, from that side, it's always good. But the Arabs, they usually just fact check all your stories. Like if I tell a story, I'm going to get that auntie that goes, no, no, that was Tuesday, Sayyid. It was not yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, you're changing the story. This is a law. You should not be paid. You should retire. Go back to school. You know, so I'm like, whoa, calm down. Just, you know, so that's all that they do. They just fact check me. But yeah. that's, that's good. You perform with your family around often. Yeah. Does that... Does that make it easier for you to do your job when they're in those jokes, or, or harder or apart? It's actually easier because people laugh because my parents are laughing. Yeah. Um, so what you'll find a lot of times is I'll do a joke about my dad, and, and when they know my dad is there, the people sit up and they want to see my dad's reaction as if he's going to get up and, you know, smack <laughs> me across the face. Uh, you know, but uh, when they see him laughing, they laugh now because he's laughing. And many times he, my parents have come to the show and I've stopped the show to allow my dad to catch his breath. Yeah. <laughs> because he knows the stories are accurate and he knows they're real and people will say, do you mind that he, you know, makes fun of you guys? And she goes, he's not making fun of us. He's telling true stories. Uh, and that's what Arabs do. Again, he's kind of keeping it real. I don't know if my mom uses that phrase. <laughs> Is there a difference in time? Like you've performed, when did you start performing? How long ago was it? It hasn't been that long. It's been maybe like three years. Uh, I mean, I was like on the, uh, fortunately, I was on the fast track, uh, jumped straight into the fire, uh, so to speak. Um, so it hasn't been that long. I've just, as a couple of fellow comedians and some people will mention, I think the reason why sometimes Palestinians do so well at plan A is because they've always been raised to know there's no plan B. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, you know, they always say, well, why don't you do this and do this so you have something to fall back on? Uh, and I think it was Keenan Ivory Waynes who once said uh, the reason why he dropped out of engineering school one semester before finishing was his dad said, finish your degree, have something to fall back on. He said, well, Dad, if I know that what I fall back on is a concrete floor, what do you think the chances are I'm going to fall back? So uh, it's, you know, that that's the mentality uh, that I guess I hold. and It's, it's, it's worked out so far in the a short period of time. Yeah. So this is not a phase for you. You see yourself doing comedy for the rest of your life. Yeah. My mom actually told me she goes, you know, I would not be radi anak 
which you know is basically the the Arab mother's way of saying if she passes away without being uh, you know approving happy you. and approving of, of how you lived your life then you will burn forever in the hellfires um, and uh, well not to you know extremes but yeah. to some extent uh, so no my mom and dad are the ones that say look we know you could pick up a book and read a book and go work in an office and do all that stuff but this is your passion this is what you love to do so when you stop doing it we know something's wrong so yeah. I continue to do it I know this is probably the thing that comedians hate the most is when somebody puts you on the spot and say can you tell us something some funny story or a joke or something on the spot to perform oh. how do you feel about that uh, um, about you asking me to do it now or how do I feel about people asking me no general? I'm asking you now basically. oh yeah no I I don't like that yeah, yeah. I don't like that at Kinda all sucks. no well, the thing is, uh, like, I always tell people I'm a storyteller, so I don't have very much of, like, the why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side type of stuff. But uh, I'm, so I usually tell stories. So thinking of stories off the top of my head sometimes is a little bit hard, but I will tell you, I just told somebody a story earlier on how Ramadan brings out the real Arabs and the fake Arabs. And I was at a, uh, I was at a restaurant, and they were making knafa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and which, by the way, I think originated in Nablus, right? This is the most famous. Yeah, place. and it was actually uh, you may have even been there the the uh, you know version, the Nablus version yeah. of Knafa. And this lady uh, is standing there next to me by my table, and she goes, "Oh my God, I love a Knafa." And I was like, "Really?" And she goes, "Yeah, you know, I'm Palestinian." I said, "Oh, Palestinian, you're Palestinian. That's good." And uh, and I said, "So you eat the uh, you eat this?" And she said, "Ay, what queda?" And I said, that's Egyptian. Well, how Palestinian are you? And then I was like, why don't you go see if you can get a piece? She goes, I love the first piece. No real Arab loves the first piece of the knafa. That's the one that has the least amount of the sugar up there on it. You have to wait at least until three or four pieces have been taken. So me, yeah. as a wise veteran in the game of eating a knafa, I knew not to rush to get the first piece. So I just let two or three people, and, and they were like, oh, ladies first, thank you. I'm like, no problem, any time. <laughs> so uh, these are things that I probably would end up uh, taking to the stage at one point and talking about the difference between a real Arab um, you know, and, a, and a fake Arab. A real Arab would have known that about the Knafa. In fact, in my family, the worst pieces, the first pieces of a Knafa go to uh, the least liked relative which is why my cousin always is first to eat the knafa. Yeah. Nobody likes him. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so I don't really have any jokes, but that was kind of a funny story I thought about. That is an awesome story. Yeah. Um, last question for you. There are a lot of people who feel like the conversation on Palestine is always too serious and too political, and they feel like there aren't enough cultural, you know, and other kind of human aspects to the Palestinian story that people are highlighting because the conversation is constantly about occupation, refugees, and so on. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to present a different side of Palestine in a way that I think even if you're not deliberately trying to do, inadvertently that's effectively what you're doing, is you're showing a completely different angle? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, uh, so many people do their best at dehumanizing uh, what's happening in Palestine. They, they always want to give you facts and figures and, you know, in 1998 this was passed and that was passed and they're breaking... But to be quite honest, the best way to gain exposure for something, if you can imagine, if somebody were to take you right now to, and feed you El Salvadorian food, you would probably taste it, and if you really liked it, you would look at them and go, I should be going to El Salvador. You know, so to me, when I get on the stage and I present an actual authentic Palestinian life, I feel that those who are Palestinian get a new appreciation, and, and it kind of takes them back. But then those who are not Palestinian and those who are from different cultures will come up to me and say, my mom is just like that. And I'll say, is she from Palestine? They'll say, no, she's Cuban. Mm -hmm. And and they're like, but Palestine sounds, you know, not to throw a parallel between Cuba and Palestine, that'll be a long discussion. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying that look, so many people will look at that and they'll just be like, man, you know, I need to do that. I need to go there. I need to hear about that. And it wasn't too long ago where a guy uh, walked up at, a, he had a huge picnic. There was a few thousand people there, like huge, gigantic picnic he grabbed me up to the front of the room and he's on the microphone making his welcome speech and he goes I want to bring up my friend Saeed for all of those of you who are watching the news every day and you see what they're talking about in reference to Arabs and Muslims I want to tell you this is my friend Saeed he's by far the best human being I've ever met don't believe what you hear 5,000 people just 
started to clap. And I was like, you just literally affected 5,000 people. So I applaud those who can write the books and do the interviews and, and show up on the major news networks and, and do their thing. Keep doing it. But uh, 5,000 people just kind of changed their mind based on the fact that, you know, this is, and he's one of my biggest comedy fans. And he comes to all of my shows. He, you know, has nothing to do with the Arab culture at all. But he comes and he's like, look, I don't care. Funny is funny. Yeah. Um, so... As I've said in a million other interviews, they always say, you know, in order for someone to trust you, they got to like you first. That's why you never say, I hate that guy, but I trust the hell out of him. Um, so I probably do a better job of getting somebody to like me in 15 seconds on a stage than most people can do off a stage. Um, and eventually they learn to trust you. So I think it's a really important piece. Um, and, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wasn't just a basketball player. Muhammad Ali wasn't just a boxer, so on, so on, and so on. Uh, you had to have those game-changing people. And once you start doing something just as good or better than other people, they'll take notice. And then that's when concessions will come. Yep. So I have a feeling there is somewhere out there in the world, there's that about-to-be movie star or about-to-be pro athlete that is, you know, uh, uh, going to take it to the next level. And that's going to become a household name. And then that's when people are going to go, oh, you know, my favorite singer or my favorite athlete or my favorite, you know, whatever, comedian... That guy that you're watching on YouTube right now, he's just like me. And then that's when other people are going to go, hmm. And then they're going to get into it. So hopefully that person's out there and the people who are out there already will continue to, to shine. So uh, it's a very important piece, often overlooked, but people need to take a look at it a little bit more. Great. Thank you, thank you very much. This has been fascinating. Appreciate cool. you taking the time. Thank you. Great.